we've all seen the sexy Razer webcam with its adjustable lighting ring up to 60 frames per second at 720p on top of 1080p. It's really cool and I thought, wow what a deal when my neighbor posted one for $50 and it was in the box. It had only been used a little bit. Her son said that I just needed a different model. Well. When I got home and opened the box, what did I find? <coughs> yep, that's right. It's in about three pieces. But don't worry, we've got a partial teardown. And if for some reason you have to solder the wires back on yours, we have the correct connections because whoever attempted the repair on this one reversed a couple of the pads. Not only that, they managed to short a couple of the pads. Okay, so here's a nice clear picture of the back of the circuit board. You can see that outer ring that is a gear that turns the potentiometer at about the top of the picture. That potentiometer was also busted. All the plastic posts that hold the webcam together were sheared apart. Now the problem here is that potentiometer if you turn it too far into the position that it's in now, it's going to disengage from that outer ring. So what I did is I just turned it by hand once I fixed it and left the brightness all the way up, which is not as big of a problem as you would think. I'm going to tell you why right at the end. Also, please note these wires are not in the correct position. You can see where the USB cable comes in and one of the wires is unplugged or unsoldered rather that yellow wire the black wire is not in the correct position. I just wanted to use this picture because it was a pretty clear picture. The next picture shows where those wires should be soldered on. Now as you can see here, the light rings lit up and these wires are in the correct position. White, green, yellow, black, red. Those wires are all soldered in the correct position. What I would recommend if this happens to you is turning it so that the potentiometer gears are not facing that outer ring. In other words, when you turn the outer ring, that potentiometer will not turn. So go ahead and adjust it to where the brightness is maximum at this time and then just keep turning it so that that potentiometer gear set will not engage the outer ring. That way the brightness will be stuck on bright and you can make adjustments as I'll show in the following picture. Okay so what are we looking at here? Well this is my version of a light filter. This is an orange covered sticky note. If you wanted to be fancy, you could get some sort of, you know, real gel uh, from lighting equipment, cut that to fit, and then use a couple of those wood clamps to hold it over the light ring. Now this is because our light is stuck on bright. It looks not so great, but it still takes pictures just fine. There's plenty of light coming through it. And you could adjust it if you wanted to, to, you know, be darker with, uh, you know, some magic marker on the paper or whatever. You know, just be creative. This camera's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to sit on the top of my monitor. And it's just fine. I'll probably never touch it like it is. The end of the story is that the neighbor ended up giving me all my money back because the thing was just smashed and we didn't know if it worked. Fortunately... Thanks to my engineering skills and a really nice soldering station that was a surplus pace with solder and desolder capability, I was able to fix it and it works just fine. Even the microphone works, but I'm not using that. I'm using my uh, Mono AU422 because it has a much better audio quality. So, there you go. Hope this helps. If your Razer Kyo got smashed or something happened to it, um, I'm kind of surprised that they did not have a connector for the USB versus soldering it on. I expected like a push-on uh, tiny connector like I see in a lot of gear from laptops and whatever. It's kind of strange that it's soldered on, but hey, whatever. 
I also noticed mine seemed to be missing a capacitor. Um, one of the pads had solder balls on the pad like there was going to be a capacitor there, but there's not. So if you're curious, take a look back at the photos. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can monetize these videos. I can almost guarantee you this is probably the only even partial teardown razor that you'll see. I forgot to mention, you'll see if you have yours apart, there's a uh, metal shield over the circuit board. It's not a big deal. Three screws, uh, double zero or triple zero screwdriver, those come off. Not a big whoop. If you're this far and you're into soldering or something, that's not an obstacle to you. So, hope that helps. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're lucky, get one for free like I did. Find one that's, uh, you know, been broken or the cable got ripped out or something. Now you know where the wires go, so that's a pretty easy fix. If you're really dedicated, you could put it in a different housing with a different potentiometer, but I'm probably just going to leave mine just like it is. We'll see. Depends on how ambitious I get, but it would be pretty easy to, you know, put an external potentiometer in there, which... You could make it look really cool if you wanted to. So, hope that helps. Like it, subscribe, or if I helped out, donate me a cup of coffee at McDonald's. Thanks for watching.